next one here, we got a milk reach-in cooler that uh, I changed the thermostat a couple months ago. And school's starting back up and it's not running. They said it didn't get cold at all. First thing I wanna do is check and see whether anything is warm, which I already done did. I didn't have no heat coming off the hot gas discharge. I have a feeling that it's either not pumping or it's got a leak. What I wanna do is go ahead and do a quick check, check to see if we got anything that's noticeable before I tap into it and possibly contaminate the area. And that's basically what we're doing right now, just seeing if there's any major leaks because it had worked just fine prior to. And uh, you know how that goes. You just worked on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and tap into it and see if we're correct. I and mean, I just kinda wonder, is it a problem with the charge or what? And I bought these things a long time ago. There you go. See how this works. He's still here. Yep. I may have to make it tighter, I don't know. I'm just afraid that that thing's gonna be too big. Don't be sissy. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Awesome. It's made for just recovery. I'm just doing this for testing purposes. Hell, it might leak around the corners, who knows? I bought it a long time ago and I'm lucky if maybe I used it once if I've even done that. So you gotta hit the power button. I'm not familiar with these things. Oh my gosh, look at that in there. Zero it out if you want. They're never zero because they don't have a fancy sensor in them. So we go to 404, not that it really matters for checking pressure, but all right, so we're good to go. Safety got, goggles on. Got a safety glasses on. What about your hearing protection, you know? We can always go for more. Keep, keep your face away. Even using his knee, knee, kneeling pad, my kneeling pad. Okay, we didn't, we must not have punctured it. I don't think we punctured it. Yeah, I don't think you did it right. So pop those suckers off or it's empty like we figured. Pop it. Possibilities. Well, yeah. No, it punctured oh, it. Definitely punctured. He's de minimis releasing. Let's see if we can get a pressure reading now. I may not be uh, punching in on that that uh, Schrader core there. Before you try to ruin my seals, there we go. I mean, it's tight. There we go. We got three pounds <laughs> of pressure, so it's it's got a leak. Lovely. Look at that. It worked just wonderful, don't it? It actually didn't work too bad. This guy's glasses off. Oh, 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 oh. Of course, they're dark, so you can't see anything. So you know. Well, that's not good. Well, let's uh, let's put some nitrogen on this thing and see what happens. Yeah, you can see that actually punctured it pretty good. As soon as his big old clawed fingers get out of there, and it gets shaking. Yep. Yep. You just call my fingers clawed fingers. Kind of rude. Well, we could tell him what your name is. You know. Clyde. You even, it's you don't Clyde. Even remember my name. It's Clyde. No, you don't even remember my name. I know what your name is. What is it? Starts with a C. Like, oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. And, and you gotta use it to make a pond stay stay full so it doesn't leak. And it takes a ton of it, so you know. <laughs> I'll give you that one. That one's pretty good. I try to be creative here. Yeah, you, you probably don't have a reamer in that bag, do you? Ah, uh, what do you need a reamer for? That's what the end of your flyers is for. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, well, we're, we're just going to hook that thing on the outside anyway, so it's not a humongo deal. <laughs> what we're going to do is go ahead and get this thing tapped on there, and we'll do a pressure test on it. And then we'll see if we can find the leak with the ultrasonic there. Chances are it might be in the wall. If that's the case, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Oh! Very nice. Setting off the smoke alarm. There we go. Floaty, floaty, floaty. Don't melt that plastic on that thing. Don't melt that. There you go. It won't show that you've got your sunglasses on. Start at 156. So we've got what, 155 in that thing. Boy, that's such a nice picture. Probably not want to use my action camera anymore. Not losing yet. Now, granted, if we would have done it on the high side, we could use the pressure test timer built into the gauges. But let's see if we can hear anything. It's probably in a side wall, so we may not be able to find out a whole lot of anything. Okay, so we can't use that because the there's there's got to be some rodent stuff in here because it's squealing no matter where I go. But I go out into the uh, control room where the chiller's at and stuff like that, and it goes away. It's just really super super strong in here. So we got 155 pounds on this thing, and it's holding. 
What do we yeah, got going on here? Did you find anything on that? Uh, I was sorry about that right there. My fingertip. Looks like someone tried piercing it. Yeah, and I sprayed bubbles on there. Crazy. And they usually yeah. they crimp it back here too though. You're crazy. All right. Maybe we're both crazy. It could be. All right, well, let's find a sucker. I don't think it's leaking that fast. Makes it's me wonder. 155.2 for a while. Yeah, it ain't dropped a whole lot. Let's switch it to the high side and put the timer on it. Well, that's not gonna work because we didn't put the Schrader core in there because I told him not to. Probably should check your brace joint here. Doubt me? Yeah, not really. It's all right. I mean, you got like seven inches of braze on that thing. It should be all right. <laughs> all right, so it's not really dropping much. You can kind of see if it. It's live and direct. Of course, it just went right back up to 152. You can see right there that's three eighths lines going up. You can see the capillary tube right there. Basically, what you can do is isolate it here and pressurize the wall, find out if it's in the cabinet. But we're not really to that point yet. However, we're not hearing anything. Can't hear anything because the ultrasonic's not on the door. Now we could take it out in the parking lot and we could double check it out there. But that's not even a guarantee that you're going to pick it up because if it's inside this insulated piping that you can't see because the light won't turn on, you're not going to hear it if it's hidden underneath that. I'm not seeing. We should see some oil somewhere if it's leaking. And I'm not seeing any oil. All right, Wilbur has a hypothesis. He says, what happens if the capillary tube is plugged up? 100%. I suppose it's a possibility because you're not going to back feed from the condenser into the compressor. It's gonna hold against it. So, I mean, it is a possibility. It uh, could have sucked it all up, pumped it into it. it uh, it's not gonna equalize if it's 100% plugged. Now, I've never seen it completely, completely plugged like that, especially if it was just working beforehand, but I suppose anything's possible. So we're gonna go ahead and relieve the pressure off this thing, cut that thing loose, put one on the high side, and see what we get. We should have probably recorded it, but we went ahead and relieved the pressure off of this thing. But it sure didn't seem like I mean, granted, it only holds 10 ounces. Let's go ahead and cut that high side, but be careful. Make sure you got your safety glasses on there. So we can get frostbite today. Oh, you sissies. All you get new guys are so <laughs> afraid of getting frostbite. No, Eventually, been... your, your hands just go numb and you don't feel it anymore. You should wear gloves. I've been frostbite before already. Nope. Mythbusters busted. All right, let's go ahead and put one on it anyway. And you're painting it on the outside. Make sure you pull it in there. There you go. Oh, he's blowing stuff up. He's getting scared. He's scared now. We've got one on the high side, one on the low side. Let's go ahead and get that thing hooked up there and see what we get. You getting something? Yep. That kills that hypothesis. So wait a minute here. We know that it's now bleeding through one side to the other. Now we can't use the ultrasonic in here. Let's go ahead and just pull a vacuum on it, throw a refrigerant in it, charge it up, see if it runs, and then do a leak check. And then they know that there's a leak somewhere. We could look for it. If we don't find it, then they know there's a leak. And then we just go from there. Because, I mean, at this point, we're kind of just wasting time. Feeling a little lazy today. Didn't want to bring in the other pump. So we're pulling through the big line. We've got the little line there just doing the high side. Because otherwise, we're pulling through the uh, capillary tube. Either way, I just want to get it pulled down. I want to see if it holds or if it starts rising. Today's just good done day. We're valved off. We got well under 500. We're watching it. It's, you know, it's coming up a little bit. You can see the leak rate's pretty slow. But, I mean, where do you think the refrigerant went? Do you think it just evaporated through the sidewalls of the copper? No, you got a leak somewhere. Is it a humongous leak? Obviously not, or it'd be slamming high up fast. Quick, quick, boom, boom, bang, bang, really fast. So we're gonna go ahead and recharge this thing. We're gonna see what we got. Uh, see if we can scan for the leak, so we can find the leak. If not, they know they got a leak. School starts here in two more days and they need it to run. Just add it to the list of all the other equipment that doesn't last and it's wore out and they can't get because everything's back ordered. It's running right now at seven degree evaporator temperature, which, you know, this is gonna run a little colder. Head pressure looks a little high. We're also a warm box, which is gonna drive everything else up. How are we doing on temperatures there, the hand touch method? warm 
top of the coil is a lot warmer than the bottom. Well, that's good. It means you're condensing at the bottom, coming out liquid, going in hot gas. Yeah, I don't like that head pressure. It's really getting up there, but we just started it. And the box temp's also 65 degrees. It just seems like it's up there a little bit, because it's kind of cool in here. We're probably lucky if it's 70, 72, 73. About 40 degrees over, ambient. We went over by half an ounce to, to an ounce. So we didn't go over a bunch. When we disconnect, we won't uh, dump it back in. We'll just keep what's in the hoses out of it and kind of see where we're at. 51. All right, so it just shut off, which this is going off of skin temperature. How's the walls look? Are they starting to frost? Yep. That's good. So it's starting to frost all the way through, so it's feeding really well. Same thing uh, down there at the bottom. So it's feeding. Um, what we're going to do is leave a note in there and we'll put the date, what we did. And I would tell them that, you know, it may last for quite a while. It may not. Uh, we can always dig into it deeper for right now. It's going to run. But, you know, this is the very first time it's been tapped. I, if this is as old as what the school is, it's at least 16 years old. And uh, they've done pretty good compared to what most things that are, you know, nowadays where they're built. So we're going to do that. Uh, we didn't find any obvious leaks. We was able to pull it down under 500. It held for a good majority of the time. Some of it was just boiling off the refrigerant in the oil, which is normal. And, uh, you know, it charged up right, and it's getting cold. So it's going to cycle a few times until it gets to treat box temperature. That's going to wrap this one up. Everything else looks really good on it. I think it was just getting low, and just luck of the draw, we replaced the thermostat, which the thermostat was having other issues. And uh, we ended up, uh, which they replaced the thermostat prior to us getting here, if you remember correctly. And we got them the correct OEM thermostat, and it worked fine for the rest of the season. And then, you know, summertime happened, and here we are. So uh, that's what we got, guys. Uh, on to the next one. So we're on the next one. We came here to clean some ice machines, and uh, they're like, hey, uh, cooler ain't working very well. So we got us a beverage air milk cooler, obviously. So uh, because I got Clayton with me, I'm going to let him figure it out. He's probably not done too much with these, have you? Uh, not, not so much specific to these, but... So nothing's running, right? That's what they say. We got power. And we got power. So what's going to be the first thing you're going to check? Well, for... I want to pull this out, make sure we're getting power to the compressor, and then... It'd be nice if I had a compressor start cord, but I don't... You know how to start cord? I made a video on how to make one. Yeah, I'm getting one ordered. Well, here's the thing I'm thinking, okay? What... What controls the compressor and the fan motor? What do you mean? Well, I'm just wondering, do we need to tear it all out of there? Can we find some of the problem faster? Kind of go with tr uh, trial and elimination. So, if the compressor was defective, wouldn't the condenser fan still run? I guess, yeah, it should. Okay, so why not feel both of them, see if they're hot? Maybe they're both off on thermal. Feel anything? No. Okay, so it's we doubt it's cool. that. So, the next thing it controls that would probably be what? These aren't very fancy. They don't have any pressure controls. What, would, what do you mean, what would control it? What turns it on and off? Uh, thermostat? Yep. So where's the thermostat at? I would check the thermostat first to see if it's got power. Well, I don't want power now. It's probably hidden in there somewhere. It could be in the back. It's hard to say. Sometimes they'll tuck a... Uh, probe up through the uh, back and it's underneath. Oh, there it is. So what I would do to be safe is probably unplug it and then drop that down and check and see if you got power there. Once you've got that kind of isolated from all the stainless steel to short into, you should be able to check power to see whether you got power coming in and going out. I guess the other thing too would be, since this has an evaporator, I didn't even know it had an evaporator. I thought it was just a uh, evaporator plate. I thought maybe the fan would be running, but I don't think I heard even the fan running. So it might be something, something major killing the whole thing. No power to the stat. Not even one leg. Make sure just because it ain't looping through it, don't mean it ain't got one leg possibly. Kind of go to chassis ground for to make sure, and then I always double check it with my little light stick just as a backup. Anything? 
here on probes. Let's see about here. That's really crazy. It ain't got nothing at all. Well, I bet you anything we gotta get into this top panel possibly. What do we got underneath here? Take a looky. Okay, there's the main plug right there. That's where it intercepts and distributes power. There's a pan there. So let's see if we got juice down here to this thing. Let's go on this case where we trust them. We shouldn't. Yeah, we got it on one leg. They must have that ground wrapped around it because it's blocking the, the lines. So the power goes right here, see that? And it kind of makes its way up that stainless steel. I would say let's unplug it and start looking inside there. That is really odd that we're not getting anything on that one. I'm wondering if we got a block down at the bottom, because that, that should be picking that up. This is pretty sensitive usually. That block, I wonder, is defective. This is where the light pan comes in handy. Let's dig into that, see if we can get that. Pull it back out. Let's see if we can get into that. There's usually a screw holding this block in right there. Uh, Phillips. Let's see, this comes in here. That intercepts it and breaks one line with the thermostat. Power comes in on this terminal here and goes on up. But for us not to get anything on that one wire, unless I'm getting a false alarm, makes me think that box is defective. Now to be positive, we probably, should, you know, without being destructive, we'd need to probe that wire. You would think what we got going on here is you've got power wire going up on one terminal, one, one lead, coming back on the other and empowering that uh, thin blade there on the left, that's your hot usually. That's what I think is going on. I have a funny feeling that this is where the problem lies. You know what we could do? You can go your meter, and you could go from the one side here, up top, to down here to see if you got continuity. Right. That would kind of save us from having to tear everything apart. It might be a little difficult. You may have to stretch. Might be able to put this thing up here in the middle, like that, and then hook one lead into the uh, bottom there and then you may have to take off your prongs there but it should be the female socket the little the little thinner one see the we plugged in there the smaller blade she'll drive one in there and then stretch that around go on go on to the inside go on eh, go on in are oh, you gonna try to force it through this side that's open in the back like that uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's pretty sad they didn't insulate it very good. Yeah, because I mean, for me to tear that thing apart, it's going to be completely destroyed. So I don't really want to tear it apart unless we're positive. Should get it on one of those terminals. So you, so you got it on one. You got it on both of them? Well, you, you still got it on the thermostat? Okay, so the thermostat's closed. Go ahead and unplug the thermostat. You want to isolate it and get that open. You want to find out which one's your power lead. So. Re re probe it there and find out which one it is. So you got nothing on that one. That's probably the power coming in. The other one you should have it on. Nope. Try it on the other one. The lead that you unhooked. There you go. So that's your power lead coming, going down. So the other one's the power coming in. So now you should be able to take the cord from the wall outlet. And I believe the one here on the left, right there, and probe the other one there. One's neutral, one's hot, so you wanna, this one right here is your hot. So go there to the one, and then go to the other one to inside, see if you've got continuity. Oh, one other one's back there. Oh. Oh, so you don't have anything. Well, my other one is on, in that yeah. interceptor block. Okay. Okay, so what we want now is to take that one, because we, we tested the one we could test. So we want to test now, there to there. What you're doing is this is the power coming in. Are you following what I'm saying? So you got power coming in on this cord. It comes down to that block, comes out of that block, comes up to the thermostat, from the thermostat back down on the other plug. So they're sending power on one and bringing it back on the other. That's why the neutral's separate. 
So you should have continuity between one of those terminals. I believe it's the one on your that right there. And it should be the terminal that you didn't have anything on the last time. That makes no sense. So no, that one, I didn't have any continuity on this one last time. Well, correct, because that's your power wire. So the power's coming in from there to that side on the right. Then it comes out on the other wire back down to your plug that you're plugged into. So what doesn't make sense to me is, is this plugged into the interceptor block back well, there? Well, I'm wondering how you didn't have any voltage on that. That's what I'm wondering, because if you've got it now with that, there's no reason why you shouldn't have had voltage. And a light pin should have picked it up. So even if a neutral's busted, you still should have had some voltage there. Something don't make sense here. Either we didn't, we ain't got a good ground to reference, but even my pin should have went off. But my pin's acting a little weird. So this don't make no sense. Something weird going on. Uh, hmm. So he's able to disassemble it, and everything looks like it's fairly tight here, but I'm not really impressed the way that, okay, it has a crimp on there. So, can't say so because people get mad about that. What we got here is basically, I'm supposed to say basically, the people bitch because they say basically, and they bitch because they say so. Why? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, exactly. What we probably end up going to boil down to is we just need a new male plug on the end because look at that. Everything's pretty tight right there. You can kind of visualize what's going on here. You got one wire feeding up above to the thermostat, comes back on there and then feeds this outlet here. So everything's fine. Um, it's gonna be that male plug, but yeah, go ahead and. There she goes comes down to it looks like we just got a bad plug here but that's smoking and stuff that's crazy but that's that, that looks like what happened here is it's gotten so warm in the past that it kind of melted that and indentated it that's not good no good no good so you understand how we did it it's pretty simple right all they're doing is intercepting the power going down yeah. and coming up now I told him he's got these wires too long we'll so see what's the verdict? The verdict is you destroyed it and it's all your fault and they're going to take this out of your check for the next six years. Correct. <laughs> That's how long it would take, too. I know. Okay. No, you've got a plug that was malfunctioning and we're ordering a new one, but for right now we put a temporary one on there to get you by since you guys are starting school here real soon. Yeah. I mean, it was working fine. And then it just Yep, it went bloop. Yep. Maybe it was lightning, but... Nope. Know. Nope. Just defective plug. Yeah, I told him that. I said, you're going to make this about an inch, inch and a half. There we go. He's like, no, you're crazy. You're not gonna be able to tuck all that crap in there. And we can't leave that layout like that. I smell defeat. So I was learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did we mess it up bad? You burnt about burnt the whole building down. This plug right here is starting to smoke on the end. Well, how long did we have that plugged in for? Last week we put them in. Yeah, yeah it, it literally, it wasn't getting power up there. We was having some problems with it. We had power at the plug, but wasn't getting through the wire. And then finally, after we checked everything out, it ends up showing that the thing starts smoking. It's like, yeah, that ain't good. Oh, why? Yeah, because Becky's been, we, they've been plugged in like for a week. Yeah. 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 You got that yet there? Maybe that Yeah. Maybe that's why they're smoking. Yeah. You got things to do. <laughs> trying to find a hole. Seven days later. <laughs> These are some cheap plugs, but we got it. I can't imagine why this is acting up. I mean, they got this thing kind of cranked in there. I do not like that plug either. Kind of got that. Look at that. Kicked right on. Our biggest problem is the mail in plug, but there was no good way to check that block. So we were getting a new block. We got this mounted on the outside, so it's easy to. Make sure it doesn't uh, get pulled out of place. It's taped all back up. The same piece of plastic was on there. It's just not a rivet holding it now. Just that piece of plastic, or that plastic uh, tape, and it's all back in there. It's going to work for them until then. We'll get the right UL rated plug that's OEM for it, and it'll be good to go. But that's where your pin thing will come in handy. Because, I mean, it basically told us right off the bat we didn't get power up here. Agreed? Yes, sir. Okay, get her done. Let's get on to the next one.